James Kaufman, World News Report, today, August 5th, 2025. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just had a very strong M-class solar flare, actually twice as strong as any solar flare that we've seen in months. We've had a M 4.42 class solar flare directly earth facing from our delta sunspot AR4168. And ladies and gentlemen, this one was absolutely earth facing and absolutely created a coronal mass ejection that was easily seen lifting off the surface of our sun. The solar flare peaked at 15.53 UTC time, or right before 9 a.m. this morning. And the event is just now ending. Now, this isn't our first M flare we've seen today. We've also had an M1.1 solar flare that popped off right after 2 UTC time. Really, just after 9 p.m. last night. It wasn't as strong as some of the flares we've seen over the last two or three days, but it was an M1.1 solar flare that peaked at, I believe, 2.12 UTC time. Heading over to spaceweatherlive.com, what do we see? We see that Sunspot Group AR4168 is giving us all the trouble all day long. This M4.42 is twice as strong as any other flare that we've seen in at least the last month plus. Now, we see the 4.42 pop off around 1546. It actually peaks at 1553 and ends at 1558, meaning it only lasted 12 minutes, a short-term flare. But I believe it definitely lifted a CME off the face of our sun. And I believe that you will agree with me when you see the data. Before that, we had our M1.1 solar flare. It popped off at 2 UTC time, peaked at 2.12, and was a 26-minute long event, ending at 2.26. All right, currently we have a 10% chance of having an X-class solar flare, a 40% chance of having an M-class solar flare. That ship has sailed twice, and we're maintaining a very strong sea baseline currently. Heading over to HMI Intensigram, we see we have a total of five sunspot groups earth-facing. We've seen that 4167 has deteriorated a little bit back to a beta gamma sunspot. It is on that far limb where we do have a geomagnetic connection. So if it were to flare, there's a good chance that it would be geoeffective towards Earth. We have three simple sunspots, and then we have AR4168 staring us down the gun barrel, directly Earth-facing. All right, taking a look at our star goes 19 solar ultraviolet imager, 195 angstroms. It sure doesn't look like a 12 minute event, but that's what they're saying. You can obviously see the coronal mass ejection lift off from the star. That means that Earth is going to be in its crosshairs in just about. 40 to 45 hours here. We also have a crawl hole moving into place, and they are forecasting coronal winds to pick up in or around the 7th or 8th. All right, this flare peaked while it was over the Caribbean, parts of the United States, and South America, and most of the Atlantic, and even some of the Pacific. So it was only a 12-minute event, but you can see it was a large event. Over to NOAA's KP Index breakdown, August 5th, 6th, and 7th. 
you would think that they would have worked the solar winds in on the 7th, but nothing's been done to update this. Now, I don't expect that they would have worked the coronal mass ejection that just popped off into this forecast, but you will see the solar winds are expected on the 7th, and they're not reflected here in the forecast. All right, taking a look at Space Weather Prediction Center, they are expecting a bump in the road late into the 6th, into the 7th from the M-class solar flare we actually had on August 3rd. And we're expecting solar winds to pick up heavily on the 7th. And it looks like they're headed from about 350 up to what looks like about 600 per the earth-facing coronal hull. Now, this is not my forecast. This is Space Weather Prediction Center's forecast. All right, taking a look at the back side of our sun. The two gray areas are the areas of our sun that are earth-facing, and the colors represent backside sunspot groups. We have 002, that should be named, and I believe it is named already. And we also have 006 and 007 also coming into play. Now, I did want to check, and it, in fact, has been named AR4169. Currently, it's a simple sunspot, but I see some magnetic cores that look like they might become complex quickly. It's been a very quiet day here thus far on our sun, looking at the estimated planetary KP index or the Fredericksburg or the Boulder index. But we'll say the college index reflects three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance. No storms indicated here. All right, taking a look at our real time solar wind discover satellite it's like we've got plasma hovering around the three to four range and we do have some anomalies here uh, but if they do go over 10 it's well not very far up and over 10. i see anomalies all day long which is very interesting it's a 26.41. And again, this is occurring all day long. These small anomalies. And you can see the wind pops up right here as well. Is this enforced by the temperature? Well, this one definitely is right here. You can see the temperature here. And so is this one enforced by the temperature right here. So, I'm at a loss for what would be causing these minute-long jumps in plasma and this small jump in solar winds. But you can see that they're intermittent and they're all day long. And actually, we've just had one pop off to about 11.53. Nothing that's brought us into a geomagnetic storm or disturbance because they're so short term. But the fact that the temperatures are backing these large spikes up is, well, bothersome to say the least uh, and difficult to understand. Here we have temperature, solar winds, and plasma all shooting up. Look at that. Crazy. Checking our work on our ACE real-time space weather satellite, the older version of Discover, we see those same anomalies exactly where they are on Discover. We see that, well, that jump in solar winds exactly where it was on Discover and the temperature jumping up at that time period as well, just like we saw on Discover. These are two separate satellites, so we can hang our hat that this is real data. All right, taking a look at our start 
SDOHMI magnetogram. There it goes, AR4167, AR4168 just looks ugly, and the sunspot below it should, should be more complex than they're giving it credit for. I'm sure that it is. I don't see any reverse polarity sunspots. Everything in the northern hemisphere is positive over negative, and everything in the southern hemisphere is negative over positive. And this is our newly named sunspot group, AR4169. Taking a look at SOHO, 284 angstroms. I want y'all to get a good look at how large this coral hole is. Now, this is a dated picture. This picture has not been posted yet today. This picture was posted yesterday morning at 7.06 in the morning. But I still wanted y'all to see, well, how dark that coral hole was. And know that on the 7th, we will be seeing an uptick in solar winds. All right, over to the planets today. We have a geomagnetic connection to Mercury, one to Pluto, one to Saturn, one to Neptune, one to Eris. And we're looking for more go dates. I would say somewhere around the 8th, maybe the 7th, 8th, 9th is a go date. We also see the moon come around a big player in this on around the 14th and 15th lining up with saturn and neptune two of our gas giants then we see a big player the moon come around and line up with mercury venus we also have a lineup going to the right here with saturn and neptune expect the 20th to be a very large day of activity as well see how far it'll let us go and we're right back in it on the 26th with a lineup of our moon earth saturn and neptune 27th might be a better a better number there uh we're in it to win it this is going to be a really really interesting august and let me just say that that should probably go into september as well with that said god bless each and every one of you guys stay safe out there eyes to the skies ten full hats on please share subscribe and always remember anything's possible in bizarro world